Hello, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. Welcome to the 2019 Annapolis Sailboat Show. Every year we come down here and start checking out catamarans, looking for that future catamaran that Janice and I will live on and travel the world. This year we decided to narrow it down to just catamarans where we got a guided tour. So that means we did 11 catamarans this season. The first episode we did the St. Francis 50. The second episode we did the Majestic 530. Now both of those boats come in around $1.2 million for a brand new boat. Well outside of our price range. Now this next one is definitely on the other side of the extreme. It is the most inexpensive catamaran we did of the 11. It's the Sea Wind 1260. It's a 41 foot catamaran. It has more of that keep it simple stupid kind of principle where everything is kind of just what you need to get across oceans. All the lines run to the helm, but there's no fancy electronics or iPads that tell you how to turn on and off your lights or change things like some of the more sophisticated boats. But then again, there's an upside to that simplicity. It's the price comes in about half a million dollars, which is substantially lower than the other boats you're gonna see in our 11 boat series. So if you're interested in a more budget-friendly catamaran, this might be the boat for you. We anchor and hoist a sail. Let's just say right off the bat that I had a little bit of a videographer screw up here. We had two cameras filming during this and thank God we did because for the first bit, you'll see my sophisticated camera on a gimbal with a shotgun mic. The shotgun mic was not turned on, so I got absolutely no audio from my camera for the first little bit. Luckily, Janice's camera was there, and we catch most of the audio. Unfortunately, this nice gentleman that did the guided tours named Jay, he introduced himself on my camera, and Janice's camera wasn't running, so we don't have the normal intro. If you see us switching back and forth between cameras, it's probably because I'm picking up the audio from Janice's camera, but I'm actually doing a lot of the more cinematic shots with my camera. A little bit more time to edit, but uh, yeah, that was my screw up. And yeah, the 1260 is sort of the third or even, even fourth generation of a 12 meter sea wind, which is it's quite a uh, yeah, reputable offshore cruising boat. And that's, that's uh, sort of the market we've already served. So, always served. So, it's got a big, obviously, uh, open, very safe deck. Everything led up, so you can control absolutely everything from the uh, from the cockpit. Self-tacking jib, which is very very carefully designed to, to tack every single time. Uh, you can see how clean the deck lines are, and and obviously you've got some seating space forward, but nevertheless, uh, offshore safety is the uh, is the absolute priority. Up here, you've got a sail plan with a streaker. Um, basically code zero setup possible. Uh, this one has an aluminium bowsprit. Carbon is also uh, possible. Carbon four beams are possible. Quite a lot of um, performance enhancements are, are doable in this boat. So what do we have in terms of solar? So this boat here has about 1,060 watts worth of solar. Okay. It's possible to get up to 1,148 watts okay. in this boat. And if you go completely with the uh, flush solar panels that are built into the roof, but this one has the traditional, more right. reliable, yeah. old-style hook solar, which is set up above the uh, roof. But the ones that are built in, you can actually go a little bit beyond that 12, almost 1,300 watts worth of solar. So there's a lot of space for solar. Huge forward opening windows in this boat is a real characteristic of sea winds. In weather there's nothing like a sea wind you can sleep up in the saloon and and uh, get cool air it's it's really a boat that stays cool in, in hot humid conditions what type of mainsail do you guys use generally standard? this one has a square top mainsail there's actually a couple of different mainsail options on this boat uh, beautiful uh, cruising laminate sail this is the standard sail what we see here okay. um, but there's also a racing sail so there's a uh, there's a, a carbon sail um, for, for the high performance sailors Crucially important feature on all sea winds is the completely protected cockpit. So whichever side of the cockpit you're on, whichever wheel you're operating the boat from, you've got protection from the sun, protection from the rain. It's good in cold climates, it's good in hot climates. You, you, exposure is, is the worst for offshore sailors. Mm -hmm. 1260 offers some um, cruising comforts yeah. that aren't available on small well, boats, like big windows, uh, tinted windows, uh, lovely glass uh, viewing to the, uh, to the sails, to keep them out themselves. It's, um, it's a, a lovely boat to operate. It's a lovely boat to sail. Really stress-free sailing. So this is the main this is the main helm on this side, then, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't even say it's the main helm. I mean, yeah, it's the it's the port side helm. You've got engine controls on this side as standard, but you can add engine controls on the other side. Okay. Uh, if you if you want the B and G instruments over there, you can repeat.
keep hold of that instrumentation over there. Okay. So both helms are as good as each other. The yeah. standard feature though is one side is your main helm with all your instruments and the other oh, side is sort yeah. of a yeah. so, so So on this side you've got a little bit more control because for example opening the door system is on this side. Uh, you've got typically if you electrify this winch you've got the main halyard on this side then you've got an electrifi electrified winch to operate that two to one. quite a lot of main halyard line to, to take in. So that's nice to have on that side. So yeah, you'll be on the port side a little bit more than, than the star. Can you talk about this door system? Can you show us what, how that works? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna save you a bunch of time here and just fast forward over this. The door system is unique. I think it's a bit finicky. You gotta pull winches and let lines down and pull pins and uh, yeah. I think just a sliding door like the traditional catamarans is probably what I'd prefer. Way easier to just decide if you want to open it at some times, close it quickly, open it again. This seems like you're either going to have it always open or probably always closed when it's cold. You're not going to open and close during your shift. So yeah, not my favorite setup, but I guess it gets it out of the way when you put it up in the ceiling. Yeah, I'd say at a boat show, we don't open and close it every yeah, single time. So it's a heavy mechanism. You tend to open it at the beginning of the day, yeah. close it at the end of the day and stuff. But Yeah, so up here you've got the saloon. The table is basically working in three configurations. So you've got a nice dining table where you can add an extra seat here. You can just pull this little bench over. Two more people can sit just here. So you can really see a pretty big party at this table. Mm -hmm. um, spin around this way. It's a little bit more like tend to use it when we're just out day sailing and you tend to put out a lot of food just here and just come in and out yeah. snacking and stuff. It's kind of a snacking situation and then sort of when you're just sailing as a couple, the boat wire, it, it, the table winds up in this position a lot and you just put it down at the end of the day, put the cushions on, you wind up sleeping there. So <laughs> the table for me is a lot usually in that, situ in that, yeah, that, in that configuration and you've just got more open area this way. This is generally a perfect place to be when you're off watch. When one of you is sailing and the other one needs to relax, but they don't want to be too far away, you'll be laying down here, sleep here, get, get some, you know, a little bit of just downtime without sleeping, you know, and just be within arm's reach. Amazing airflow right at your head there. Too. Amazing airflow. You can just open your eyes, see the sails, see what's yeah. going on above you. So it's, it's quite convenient. And obviously the nav desk is here. When you're operating the boat, you tend to have all your bits and pieces here. You can easily access the chart plotter with your left hand, so you just spin this around. Operate the chart plotter, do your work, laptop. This one's got a 9-inch plotter on it, but obviously there's 12-inch plotters available and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Fusion the stereo system? Fusion, yeah, so you've got a Fusion stereo system and TV. This is with a 22-inch TV. There's also an option to have a 32-inch TV that comes up and down. Okay. Nice big TV, but yeah. uh, <laughs> not necessary for everybody. Yeah. Um, we'll this, this one here is manual switches, so it's a mechanical, traditional manual switching operation. But there's also a option to have a C zone system. So that means digital switching, electronic control over the whole thing, which you can then control from your iPad if you're away from the boat. So I don't know, you uh, you go sailing, you come into a marina, and you leave your navigation lights on. You can. Uh, go into your iPad and shut your navigation lights off from the restaurant mm -hmm. without trucking back to the boat and, and taking care of it. So that puts like sort of an extra dashboard up yeah, here that's if you've optioned that. So down here you've got the uh, master cabin. So basically this one is with a transverse bed. And the idea here is that on the wing you can fit a really, really big bed and you can sleep transverse. So if the wave state is from a certain angle, you can put your head at that side. We, we know that you do wind up sleeping a lot in the saloon and things, but nevertheless, it is still it does still count, especially if you've got lots of guests sleeping on the boat, that it's nice to have your head in the in the right position. So you can sleep that way or this way, uh, and the other bed is longitudinal, so you can, uh, that one has your head at, at one end. Okay. This is a nice big surround bed. There's options here for a child's bunk that goes in this place, and there's also an option which isn't on this boat that gives you another full cabinet with hanging storage and that kind of stuff. Uh, adds a little bit of weight, all that cabinetry work, but uh, nevertheless, it's a nice feature if you, if you want it. Plenty of storage under the bed here. Okay. Very practical space. Storage in the hall. Yep. Storage throughout here. Tons of storage in the boat. I mean, it is a catamaran, so you expect to have decent storage. Shower space, nice standing shower, plenty of room. 
Uh, very handy that you can rinse off everything using the shower. You can clean the toilet, the sink, everything using the shower handle. So oh, that's really um, yeah. it is a very practical yeah. space, easy to clean. Um, 1260 is very much a boat meant for sailing enjoyment and trying to reduce the amount of time with with the upkeep. Yes, awesome. Nice. Okay, so interesting thing about most sea winds, or all the sea winds under 50 feet, have the galley down. And that's because we want to have all that space to open those doors up completely, get the ventilation in the hot climates. In the cold climates and where you've got rougher conditions, it's also much nicer to be cooking down here because everything's really braced in there. You've got mm -hmm. the galley on both sides of you. and. I, I, for one, you know, be prone to knocking things over a little bit, maybe a little bit clumsy with what I'm doing and, you know, cutting myself. So I, I, I sort of appreciate it, but those that are a little bit more coordinated than me, probably. Double sinks, just like that. Yeah, they can get a really, yeah, double sinks, again, all very practical, plenty of ventilation for the stove right here. Yeah. Um, it's a smart, practical layout. You've got fridge and freezer in the, uh, in the chest. You've also got a bar style, sorry, mm -hmm. now another you bar fridge there as well. Um, options here for a microwave, uh, this cabinetry doesn't have to be here too, you can lighten up the boat by having a little bit less cabinetry or even another set of cabinetry, it just depends on how much um, you know, the weight uh, is important to you. The, uh, the air conditioning units are back here too, so um, they're quite central to the boat to minimize the effect of the weight and all the systems on the performance. We try to keep things like generators and washing machines, air conditioning, blower units, like all that kind of stuff in a nice central place. That's why that fridge is up here and not outboard. You know, that careful attention has been made to, to keep the balance and keep the steering you know, really nice and responsive. After cabin is here. It's probably a little bit smaller than you're going to expect on a lot of uh, more production catamarans. But uh, again, with the performance that you get from this boat, um, we find that nobody, nobody, minds, um, nobody minds that space at all. So this is your guest cabin, the one on the yeah. other side that was guest, side more, of the, more of a guest cabin. Yeah. Side. Mm. It's still plenty big. It's a double bed. Yeah, back here is a big bed. Oh, I see. There's another one. Ah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and back here you've got the longitudinal bed. So this one again, you've got you've already got that other bed where if you want to sleep in that direction, in that orientation, you can be comfortable sleeping that way. But in this one, you can you can sleep this way. So um, if it's just a couple, and a lot of our customers are just a couple, maybe a couple of kids, something like that, just nice to have you know both beds in different orientations, mm -hmm. that whichever is com more comfortable on the day. Gain tons and tons of storage in the boat. Not storage for storage's sake, but where there is a place where we need structural pieces, stru structural components to the boat, mm -hmm. we've in made intelligent storage out of them, not just making cabinetry to weigh down the boat just for the sake of making yeah, cabinetry. Just to point out how many cabinets mm -hmm. you can fit in. Yeah. So this is this seat switches both ways? Yeah, the seats don't go both ways. You can take this off for cleaning it and you know reupholstering that kind of stuff. So you can see it's a nice stainless mechanism. It just works in that direction. Flip that way. If you want, flip it the other way. And sleep or sit facing aft. Yeah. People are sitting here and you want to here you've got a sink. Yep, fish cleaning station. It's nice and practical, keeps the mess out from in the boat. And also because you've got the galley down, this is making sure that you've got, okay, you've got a messy place to work inside, and you've got a messy place to work yeah. out here, but you're not, you know, making a big mess in between. Yeah, yeah exactly. And this is your outdoor seating? Yeah, exactly. Outdoor seating. This table is removable, so you can put another one of these units here, so you can have a sort of a double lounger if you want to just sit side by side and be in the cockpit. You don't need to have that cockpit table there. Realistically, two people, how many places do you need to sit? And you might not need this table and that table and so many tables you can have desk and everything. So again, just for the purpose of not having just tables for table's sake, this is removable. Make a lounger and on a passage, you, you actually wind up sometimes just crashing out back here and mm -hmm. sleeping, while, yeah, sleeping while the while. other person's on watch. You yeah. know? So it's a good it's a good fun cockpit and, and practical. Okay. Okay, Jay, well, thank you very much for the tour. Oh, it's been a pleasure. First time I've actually filmed the Sea Wind, and I got a lot of comments from people saying, can you please film the Sea Wind this year, because you got a lot of interest. You got a lot of <laughs> Thanks very people much. who yeah, obviously really real uh, yeah. uh, think highly of your boats.
Great. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, so both of you. Hey everybody, we are back at home and we've just reviewed all the footage that we took of the Seawind 1260 uh, to refresh our minds and like really discuss what we did like and did not like and so now we're doing our little recap. Glad we did too. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> sometimes you come off the boat and you're like, yeah, that was a really we nice boat. We saw so many in such a short period of time. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I did. We're doing 11 of these. Yeah. So you get off the boat and you're like, yeah, it was good, right? Yeah, it was good. And then we go on the next boat and yeah. then later when we see the footage, we start nitpicking things a little yeah, bit I more. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Which is good. So the number one pro Let's get right off the bat, bat, the best part of the boat, this boat, is it's performance for price. It's a yes. good bang for the buck if you're into performance. Mm -hmm. um, this boat's probably one of the lightest boats. It's definitely the most inexpensive boat of yeah. all the boats we've looked at at the show. Uh, the guy, now he kind of told me that the price is around 430. He said, relatively well equipped. And I don't know if that means fully equipped the way we want. Mm -hmm. With like a water maker, generator, lots of solar, you know more instruments than it had it seemed like this boat was very basically laid out mm -hmm. um so but if you're into light boats performance boats uh this boat is good it's good for that yeah like it has a really good sail plan and and it does have a rounded uh, self-tacking edge like a, a, a rounded track for the self-tacking jib so it will tack easily yeah um yeah, light uh has a good code zero big uh, yeah. bow spread out the front mm -hmm. with the code zero so it's me definitely meant to be a good sailing boat and i'm sure it goes pretty well for only yeah. 41 feet long it's a pretty small waterline, but it probably sails really, really yeah. fast. So if you're performance minded, this is a good boat for you. Mm -hmm. Now, it's probably a good boat too, if you're not planning to live on it full time. Yeah. It's- We thought it makes a good cottage boat, but yeah. not house boat. This is a boat you fly to and then race around for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks on vacation in the BVI or whatever, mm -hmm. um, because it's performance oriented, but not live aboard no. oriented. Not an adequate replacement for my house. No. no. Especially things like if you look at every single bed, whether it's the master bed or either of the two guest bedrooms, notice there's absolutely no cabinetry or shelving or plugs or anything around the bed. No. Nothing. So you can't plug in your phone beside your bed. You can't put your lip balm. I, I keep you, my lip balm, my phone, and my Kleenex right at arm's reach at all times. No, no such luck. You, it's it's going to be down the hall or under the bed or stuck yeah, yeah stuck under the mattress. Who knows where it's going to be? Certainly not going to be beside your bed. Mm -hmm. And most of the liveaboard cats have shelving and little or some cubby holes that you can open. You know? and, and a lot of them, the smart ones, have plugs beside the bed. Because in this mm -hmm. day and age, she doesn't even wear a watch. You need yeah. to have your phone plugged in next to your bed so that you can look and find out uh, the time or your alarm might go off from your phone or a lot of the times people have their Navionics set up on their phone so yeah. that they can kind of wake up in the middle of the night like and see we'd if like they're... to pinpoint or like pin ourselves so yeah. we can check during the night to see if we've moved yeah and... anchor dragging so you pin where you yeah. are and you wake up at two in the morning and the wind's howling you look down at your phone and go no we haven't moved we're good and go back to sleep you don't have to get up and walk outside to make sure you haven't moved so yeah. it's important anyways mm -hmm. no storage near the bed no plugs near the bed um, some of the other things that kind of, it's very, very basic, very meant for you to just fix things on your own. All the lines are right on the deck. Yeah, all exposed. To the sun, to the salt, mm -hmm. to the abuse that they're going to take. They're going to wear out fast. Yeah. Now his argument was that that way you can access them and replace fix things them. and replace yeah. things. And I said, that's, you know, I'm thinking that's great. I didn't say it to him, but I'm thinking that's great, but you wouldn't have to replace these lines as much if they weren't constantly abused by the sun. So yeah, yeah. that wasn't one of our, and yeah. you're going to step on them too right. when you're walking. So. It did have princess seats, and it had some nice seating uh, around the the mat around the trampoline, trampoline yeah. in the bow, and the good si good size trampoline, nice seating in the front, back. Um, was cockpit. okay. Was yeah, okay. cockpit was okay. Yeah, it had a little table. It wasn't a big yeah. table. It had a little table for two or three people to eat around, mm -hmm. and that's where I find when I did that transatlantic. You eat outside. You yeah. very rarely eat inside. Yeah. Now this boat, you might eat inside because it has the most amazing yeah. airflow. Those front hatches are huge yeah, and they open up. Yeah, one big advantage it has over lots of other cats. Yeah. I don't know why they all don't do that. Um, Most cats have, have the uh, have the glass opening. and then they have a tiny, tiny little opening tiny. for airflow. Yeah, a little. So yeah. this one, the whole window opens mm -hmm. up. And that's good. So there'd be lots of airflow in the main salon and therefore you might eat in there more than you would on a traditional cat right. with lack of airflow. Um, I wasn't in love with that sliding or lifting door system no. because when i was on again on the transatlantic sometimes the air conditioning is on inside um and people are coming and going but we kind of know when the air is on you slide the door closed every time you go through but you're coming in and out all the time so having the door up means you're probably just going to leave it up which means you're definitely not going to have yeah. ac um and if somebody's inside doing something and you're outside talking and you want a little privacy you can't easily close the door without taking it down from the ceiling and it was a yeah. big rigmarole to get that thing down so wasn't in love with no. that system. But anyways, that was a 
minor flaw. Mm -hmm. And the galley down is not my favorite, but I did have two sinks, so that's yeah. good. And like all boats don't for some reason, mm -hmm. though the, the holes are very narrow, but it, it is a small boat. But small and performance oriented, yeah. so the hulls are narrow, yeah. But uh, what else do we have? Pause. Okay, looking at our list, the other thing we notice is the boat becomes fairly standard. You could just tell, every time I asked what came included, I felt like he kept telling me what could be included, not what was included. Like he actually points at a winch near the main helm and says, oh, if you choose to electrify this winch, then it'll be the one you use for X, Y, Z. I'm thinking, choose to electrify that? Wouldn't that be automatically electrified winch? And no, I guess not. So I guess you, you come standard with manual and maybe you choose one or two winches that you want to pay a little extra for to get electrified. The solar, I kept asking how much solar comes with it because the boat at the show had very minimal solar on it, two panels. Um, and he kept saying, well, it, it, it can fit 1100 watts, which implies if you use every square inch of the, of the coach roof there, um, you could get 1100 watts. Well, that's not really the question I was asking. I was asking what comes standard in the price. So be aware that the price they quoted at 430 probably comes with maybe no solar mm -hmm. or very little. Um, no added electronics. No added electro. Oh yeah, the nav station like came right, nothing. There, there was there. nothing on them, just a desk. So at least count on five hundred thousand dollars for this boat. So yeah, it's down there in price. It's one of the lowest price boats mm -hmm. we saw, but be prepared. There might be a lot of add-ons you want to put on if you're planning to live on the boat. But the cockpits are located behind. Yes. The salon. Those so might there's be no deep. separate. You're looking through the salon, through that front hatch, yeah. uh, so through two layers of glass, potentially. Um, to steer. Yeah. And at night, and I talked to Janice about this off camera, mm -hmm. when I did that cross the Atlantic, of course, half the time you're sailing in absolute pitch dark. And when you get to Brazil and, and some of these areas where it's very economically poor areas, the fishermen don't have AIS or radar or anything to let you know they're there. And a lot of times they're smaller boats and all they have for lights are like lanterns hanging off them. So when you're sailing near a coastal area, you have to have your eyes on a swivel at night and looking for even the slightest bit of light because these little guys and they're sailing and they're fishing boats, you could easily run into them because they're not gonna radio you and tell you that you're coming too close. So you have to see light. And if you're, if you're looking through a salon out the front, if there's any lights in the salon at all, somebody's reading a book or they're watching something or any instruments like the microwave or and the nav station has any instruments or lights on, those lights are going to distract your vision and you're not going to notice those little specks of light on the horizon. So sailing at night could be really dangerous if you're looking through a salon and there's no other option on this boat. So mm -hmm. that was a big detractor for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next boat we're going to talk about is more kitted out to what we would like and yes. it's not a lot more expensive. No. It's the Maverick 440, so it's a little bit bigger, 44 feet. It's more meant for a liveaboard. Um, much like in the Antares 44, it's a little bigger, also made for liveaboards. Those are all coming up in the future episodes. For this episode, let's just say this boat gives us a lukewarm feeling, mostly because we're not performance catamaran no. people. No, I want comfort. I want comfort, yes. And amenities. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode, learning about the Sea Wind 1260. If you did, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe. Yeah. Stay tuned for those episodes I just talked about. Bye. Ciao for now. We anchor and hoist the sail.